Praise the Lord, everyone. It's so good to be in the house of God today. Uh, so I'm always happy to be in the house of God. I don't take this lightly. I don't take this like something easy or something uh, not important. This is very important to be in the house of God. The Bible talks about the people gathering together. Don't 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 dis uh, don't disobey that. Or don't try to take that away. But it's good when everyone gets together in the house of God and they begin to worship and they begin to magnify the name of Jesus and they begin to praise God. It is something that God can move and God can do something great. So with all that being said, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be uh, bringing the word of God here today. I give honor to all of you guys that are watching and my dad for giving me the opportunity. Let's go to the book of James in the New Testament, the book of James chapter 1. We're going to start reading from verse number 13. We're going to go all the way down to verse 18. James 1, and then we're going to start from verse number 13 all the way to verse 18. And in the Bible, the Bible says that, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It cometh down from the Father of life, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. From this moment of time that I have with you guys, I, I want to uh, speak to you guys on this topic that you can overcome. You can overcome. In the book of James, we find the Bible says that when let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, that neither he tempted he any man. What that was telling us is when a person gets to a place of temptation, the Bible says to never blame that on God. Because God will never be tempted with evil. He don't give in to temptation. God have not he, he don't give in to sin. The Bible says that he, he, he died with no sin on him. There was no sin. There was not a sin that you can find on Jesus. There's no sin in him. So the Bible says that when you go through a season of temptation, don't try to blame that on God. Don't say that God tempted me because the Bible says that God cannot be tempted with evil. But it continues and said that neither tempted he any man. God is not the reason that he, God doesn't tempt you with any type of, of sin or, or any type of bad thing for you to do. God doesn't give you the desire to do that. But I looked up the definition of temptation and the internet said that temptation, the definition of it is the desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. See, temptation is a feeling, it's a desire for you to do something that is wrong, for you to get outside of God's covenant and outside God's will, and that you begin to have a desire to, to lust and entice and, and the desire for murder and desire for hate and desire for all these bad things. And the Bible says that when you are tempted, don't say that God tempted you or, or that he's the reason why you have the desire. Because the Bible says that in God, he cannot be tempted with evil and he don't tempt any man. Can I tell you that God is not the reason why people choose to murder? God is not the reason why people have babies out of wedlock and are not married. God is not the reason why young men be, start beginning to be involved in, 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 in some type of game. God is not the reason why people choose to do bad things. God is not the reason why mankind choose to hate and murder and curse and, and have sin in their life. God is not the reason. God is not the source that sin comes out of. The Bible says that he cannot be tempted with evil and neither does he tempt any man. The Bible talks about the temptation of Jesus in the book of Matthew, which we will look very uh, after soon. But temptation is something that is wrong. Something that, that try to pull you away from God. Temptation is for somebody to have a desire to do something that's outside the will of God. And the Bible says that when you get to a place of temptation, 
don't blame it on God because God doesn't tempt you to do bad things. Amen. See, temptation is something that the devil tries to use so he can have you fail. See, if you, there's different ways that the devil will try to tempt you. Then if you're a young man and you like this, he will use that same thing that you like, turn it to bad so you can fall into the same temptation. If you're a man and you are left alone with a woman, the devil will try to use that time for you to fail. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Genesis, we find a great story of a young man. His name was Joseph. In Genesis 39, verse number 10, the Bible says that it came to pass, I suspect to Joseph day by day, that he heard could not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she called him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. See, we find the story of, of Joseph. Joseph went in the house and no one was in the house except for her. It, it, it was, uh, it, it was the, the king's wife. She was in the house by herself. So when Joseph went to the house, Joseph didn't know she was there. The Bible says that Joseph went to the house to do his business, to do what he always done, to go in there. And, but when he got into the house, he was there by herself and it was him and her. And she always had this type of feeling toward Joseph. She thought Joseph was charming and look and look good. And so when Joseph goes into the house, she, she saw a, a moment, she saw an opportunity to have Joseph fail. And, and the Bible says that it was not just that moment, but the Bible says that she did it day by day, which means that every day she would try to be with Joseph, she would try to have Joseph fail. She would try to have Joseph fail and, and the anointing of Joseph would fall away. She would try everything and every day she would try to lie or sleep with Joseph. And the Bible says that she did it day by day, which makes me know that temptation will come to you every single day. There's not a time that the devil takes break. There is no break in devil's timing. The devil doesn't take a 10 minute break and go to lunch. The devil is always working. He always trying to find young people all across the world. He find pastors and preachers and, and wives and married couples and, and he will try to have everybody fail because the devil does not take a break from trying to have you fail. The devil would always try his ability to have you fail and for you to not love God and for you to not come to church and for you not worship and for you to just let God be by himself and for you to go different ways with God. And the devil would do that day by day. There's not a day that the devil will not tempt you. There's not a day that the devil will not put images and, 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 and gravely images in front of you for you to fail. But the Bible says that she did it day by day. She would try to sleep with Joseph and try to get him to fail. The Bible, which makes me know that temptation and sin and, and the desires of this world would always try to convict us and, and try to have us fail every day. There's not a moment that devil doesn't say, Sunday is a great day to worship and begin to praise God. But the devil does not take a break on Sunday either. See, when people go to church and gather, the devil will try his best to have you fail on Sunday. Sunday is not a day where the devil takes break, but Sunday is another day the devil will try to have you fail. And he will try to tell you, you don't got to go to church. You don't have to get up morning to go to church. You don't have to go and gather together and worship God. You can just stay home. And, and the devil will try to speak to your mind and speak to your heart and tell you that it is not important for you to go to the house of God. But can I remind you that it is in the house of God where you can find healing. It's in the house of God where you can find miracles. It's in the house of God where God can save you. It's in the house of God where God can touch you. It's in the house of God where God can deliver you from evil. We have to come to the house of God. We have to worship. We have to love Jesus with all of our hearts. See, there's not a day that a devil will not try to tempt you. But the Bible says that she will try every day to have Joseph to sleep with her and to have Joseph fail. But the Bible says that when Joseph went in the house and Joseph seen her by herself, that she came by him. And the Bible says that she touched him of his garment. And the Bible says that Joseph started taking off his clothes and he ran out. He fled out. He left the house. He left what he had on and he ran. See, because if he would have stayed there just a little bit longer, he would have failed. Because Joseph is a human. Joseph is a human. He has flesh. He has blood. He has bones like us. So if Joseph would have never ran and he got himself in a moment, Joseph would have failed. 
Joseph would have did something that is not good. Joseph would have done something that is really terrible. But see, the Bible says that Joseph left his garment. Joseph left his coat. Joseph left his clothes. And he ran to Jesus. Can I tell you that when sin comes to your way, you don't have time to argue. See, I've talked to a lot of young people before and I've taught classes and preached to a lot of people. But see, the moment where you stop and you try to talk back with the devil is the moment you lost. Because you're not supposed to argue with the devil. You're not supposed to stand there. Because the devil has all this knowledge and all these things that all these tricks that he will try to have you fail. The moment when you try to stay here and try to argue with the devil is the moment you fail. Because we find in this story that Joseph didn't argue with her. Joseph didn't ask her, why are you doing this? Why you want me? He didn't do that. The Bible says that he left his clothes and he ran. Because if Joseph would have stayed there and tried to argue and try to talk with her, he would have ended up family. Can I tell you that when temptation comes your way, don't try to argue with the devil. Don't try to argue. Don't try to talk back with the devil. Just run. Get away from him. Don't do what he's telling you to do. Just get away from him. Because the moment you try to talk with him is the moment he will convince you. Is the moment he will trick you. Is the moment he will tell you. You don't have to go to church. It's the moment he will tell you, you can sleep with them. It's the moment he will tell you all this. But the moment you don't, you don't have to open your mouth to the devil at all. You just got to go to Jesus because God can give you the strength and the power to overcome. I've come to tell somebody that you can overcome. See, the Bible says in James 4 and 7, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. The Bible didn't say talk with him. The Bible didn't say try to argue with the devil. The Bible didn't say, okay, you can sit down on the table and you can have a meal with the devil. Try no. The Bible said you have to resist. The, the resist, it means that you have to free. You have to run. You have to just get away from that place and you have to leave. Be resist the devil and he will flee from you. But see, the devil will not flee from you if you don't resist him. Because if you're talking with him, you're not resisting, you're having, a, you're having a conversation. And you and the devil was never meant to have a conversation. You was meant to resist him. You was meant to cast him out in the name of Jesus. You was meant to, to, to get away from him. You was meant to go to God and not go with the devil. Because the moment you try to fight the devil on yourself is the moment you fail. But the moment you say, God, fight for me, is the moment where God will come on your side and God will fight your battles and God will wait for you. But the moment you try to do it on yourself, you will not succeed. You will not overcome. But the moment you say, Jesus, help me, is when God will get in your position and God will fight the devil for you. Stop trying to fight the devil by yourself. Stop trying to fight him with your own words. But get God on your side because the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. But with man, this is impossible. What I'm trying to tell you is if you get God on your side, God will fight for you because God has more power. He has more knowledge. He has more strength. He has more wisdom. So when you have God on your side, God can fight for you. And that's what Joseph did. Joseph said, I will not stay here and try to argue with the devil, but I'm going to run to God. And when he ran to God, God fight for him. And Joseph was able to overcome the temptation and he was able to overcome the sin because the moment you try to talk with the devil is the moment you lose the battle mm -hmm. but the moment you say I'm not even going to talk with him I'm not going to have a conversation the moment you give your life to Jesus Jesus will get in your position and he will fight for you one more verse 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 the Bible says that they have no temptation taking you but such as in common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. The Bible says that God is faithful. The Bible says that he will make a way out of nowhere so you can continue and be great. See, the Bible says that there is no temptation that have taken you that is such common to man. But the Bible says that every temptation that you go through is because 
uh, the same people went through the same thing. There's pastors and there's elders and there's bishops and there's men of God and women of God that, that went before me that know, that know how to deal with struggle, that know how to deal with temptation. So when I'm in this position, I can always look to a man of God. I can always look to a woman of God that being where I am now. And I can say, how did you overcome? See, because the moment you start getting knowledge from men of God and women of God, and they tell you how to overcome, it helps you as a young person. It helps you as a person that don't know a lot. See, because wisdom is so important that you've got to get it from people that have wisdom around you. And, and, and Joseph was able to do that. He ran and got wisdom. And he was able to overcome. Today, if you're going through something that seems that you can't overcome, I want to let you know that God is faithful. God is so faithful. That he is willing to fight your battle for you. He's able, to, he's able to overcome any sin, any temptation. God is faithful. And today, if you're struggling, if you there's temptation, if there's sin that you can't overcome, I want you to know that you can resist the devil. You can submit yourself to God, and God will fight for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this powerful word of God we heard. God, we thank you that temptation is not the final, but God, help us to know that, God, we don't need to argue and talk with the devil. We don't need to have a conversation with him. But, God, I pray that every person that's listening, that you will give them the power and the strength to overcome. God, I pray that we will become victorious, that we will win this battle, that you will fight for us, because the Bible reminds us that with God, all things are possible. God, I pray that you will be on our side. Help us to overcome temptation. Help us to overcome sin and help us to overcome the desires of this world and we will become victorious and we will become what you have called us to do. And I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God Amen. bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, me we shoot Yeah. Mm -hmm.